Hey there YouTube, welcome to Big Mike Beard Wisdom. So, I'm kind of a sucker for really good deals and maybe just clearance items. <laughs> and when I was at Lowe's last time, this was in like the clearance area that they had. So, it's like a wind speed weather station. And it was kind of one of those things where I thought it'd be kind of cool to have. Because essentially, there's been plenty of times that I've, you know, looked out the window and went, hmm, I wonder what it's like outside without having to actually open the doors. And then today I'm just kind of killing time while I'm burning down some dead logs that we had. So, you know, figured why not install this thing and do a review. It looks pretty cool on the box. <laughs> so it's got a 330 foot wireless range. It has separate sensors to provide more accurate readings and proper placement. Looks like it reads like date and time, outdoor temp, indoor temp. What it feels like and a top wind speed in the last hour which i think would be pretty cool because here in minnesota you know even though you would think it'd be relatively not super windy it is fairly windy here in like southern minnesota i think a lot of it is so many of the trees are kind of knocked down or for farms and then especially when like the farmland's kind of not fully grown up it's pretty windy so here's the side of the box so another view of like the I guess the sensors you kind of hang up. The wind sensor I think will be kind of interesting. Uh, hopefully it has some sorts of rules or something like that. As though we recommend putting this in this location. That way you don't get weird speeds. Or same thing with that. If that's a temp sensor. So if it's a temp sensor. You know are you better off putting it in the shade. That way you get the temperature in the shade. Or I mean really. Are you better off putting it in the sun. Because let's face it if you're out here mowing the lawn. You're out in the sun. You're feeling that full temp. Wouldn't you rather know the full temp. And go, hmm, maybe tomorrow. <laughs> so, inside the box, we have a bag that is not a toy. <laughs> and that must be like the frame interface stuff. This looks like the remote temperature and humidity sensor. Probably instructions, which are always important. Something looks like a cup. <laughs> Probably a base to something. I'm gonna go with a whirly gig. <laughs> And some screws so one of the big things is that when you read like the specifications on here you can see so battery backup three AAA batteries not included primary power 5 volt AC adapter included then for like the wind sensor two C batteries not included and the thermo hydro sensor, two AA batteries, not included. So while I was at Lowe's, I also picked up some C batteries, which has been a while since I've seen some C batteries. I mean, these are kind of like the big maglite flashlight ones that I'm kind of used to. But C's are the smaller than D's. <laughs> and a good bit bigger than any kind of A's. And then double A's, the bigger A's. And then instructions. Looks like they come in English. As well as Espanol. Alright, then looks like first thing it has you do is go ahead and put the batteries into the thermo hydro sensor and into the wind speed sensor. Then you wind up going in, powering up like that head unit. So hook it up to the 5 volt power. You can insert the battery backups. And then adjust the time and date settings to, on the station. Once both settings show, place them outside. And then it looks like they do want you to watch videos on how to mount the sensors, which looks like it's going to be kind of a bummer. But I have to do that. Then you'll go through the settings. Looks like there's an atomic function, which would be kind of cool because then you can, you know, set it up so that it looks for that atomic clock. That way you're super on time. And then there's even stuff where it looks for the atomic time signal. If it doesn't want to receive in it, it'll look every two hours until the signal's received. 
Looks like some weather forecast stuff. Not sure how that's going to work exactly. Low battery indicators. So that'll be pretty cool. That way you know, hey, the thermo hygro sensor is getting low. The wind speed sensor is getting low. And if it's next to the indoor time, then you know that the weather station's backup batteries are getting low. Looks like there's a optional sensor weather shield to protect your outdoor sensor from rain and snow which when i grabbed this one to put the battery in i did kind of notice you just pop that little door down there's the batteries right there not a whole lot for it as far as you know protecting it so i don't know be interesting to see how weatherproof it needs to be <laughs> So pop the batteries in here real quick, pretty easy. So just put them in. It's got like the little, the, here's how the batteries go. And this is pretty simple too. So I just popped them back in here, then it beeped at me. But you can see it's got the date and time. It's got an outdoor temp, which is the top one, an indoor temp, which is the bottom one. S seems interesting they're different because I mean, they're both sitting right here, but you know, indoor temp is what the head unit reads. Outdoor temp is what that's reading. So, I don't know. Apparently, I'm a little bit warmer than ambient air temperature over here. <laughs> and damper. <laughs> it is 89 degrees, I guess. Feels like 93. Forecast is sunny with clouds. And then haven't put the sensors in the wind speed sensor yet, or the batteries in the wind speed sensor yet. So for the wind speed sensor, looks like that funny little cup goes down at the bottom here, and the two batteries go right in there. So pretty much had to bring it inside in order to get the wind speed sensor one to read. So kind of weird, but just one of those things that might be something where we've got to plug it in. Interesting thing, looks like it's trying to tell me that the outdoor one is low on battery. The wind speed one looks like it's good on batteries. How windy is it? Who wants to put together, I guess? Not much. <laughs> or it's three. With you, like, just walking back and forth. Yeah, okay. That's accurate. <laughs> <laughs> the big thing when I watched the videos is that it basically said kind of leave the sensors and the head unit together for about 15 minutes. So I'm going to leave this one and that one in here for a little bit and go find a nice place to mount this. And then that range of like the 300 feet or something that this is going to reach and stuff, that's not accounting for it passing through walls and windows and trees and other stuff. So I'm hoping that... You know, I'm thinking maybe the little tree stump out there and the pole out there is what I'm going to attach it to. All right. So there was only four screws that came with the whole kit. So I used all four in this mounting base down here and I stuck it to this old stump. It's fairly stable down here. As you work your way up, though, it does get a little wobbly. So how well is it going to work in like really high winds or really, really bad winds? I don't know. We'll definitely find out. So, but you can kind of see, wind's blowing a little. So, pretty interesting. This is probably five and a half feet to the top of here. So, not that tall. Definitely not as tall as me. So, I'm six foot. So, it's just kind of one of those things. It's in place. It should be in a decent spot. It's kind of right in the middle of the yard here. So... If there's any kind of wind we should be feeling it it would be interesting to have it kind of in this area here because especially in the winter time that is like a wind tunnel <laughs> so you get some really interesting drifts where all the snow will be blown almost clean from the driveway and mounded up in a certain spot so but that's where that one's at and then this one 
The video said to put it on like a north facing wall, which makes sense because that'll help avoid it being in the sun and getting a warmer than normal reading. So were it in the sun, you'd be getting, how hot is that <laughs> temperature as opposed to what the air temperature would be. So right now that's actually kind of warm. And then how hot is it? 135.5 <laughs> was the highest reading. That's plenty warm for plastic in the sun. So, but I mounted it right here. They said go ahead and use one of the screws if you wanted to, to kind of mount it up here. Otherwise, there's a little spot in the back, kind of like a picture frame, that if you had a nail in there, you could hang it from the nail. So I just used a two inch deck screw, kind of make sure it's in there. I didn't tighten it super tight, so it's still a little wobbly, but this should be serviceable where it's at. And doesn't interfere with my power outlet cover. So should be all good to go right there. So you can see kind of a big difference between inside and outside. So inside about 79-ish and 41% humidity. I don't think it's quite 79 in here. I think it's a little bit cooler. So that might still be a little bit hot. So this infrared thermometer saying it's about 77.4 when I scanned the countertop there. So, you know, maybe this is still a little warm from outside. But, or that might be the degree of inaccuracy we're gonna run into. But you can kind of see 90% humidity or 90 degrees outside, 42% humidity, <laughs> feels like 91, wind speed in the last hour, the top wind speed was 3 miles an hour, current wind speed 0, I would agree current wind speed is 0, so all in all, not too bad getting it set up, definitely to see how well ones up doing. And I did kind of like disconnect this. So, and since I took the outdoor sensor, popped the batteries out, put the batteries back in, and then had this search for the outdoor temp. So if you hold down that temp sensor, it'll search for the outdoor temp sensor. And then that kind of made that battery light go away. So maybe the batteries are fine. Maybe it's just this thing, it's a little weird. So if you're kind of tired of looking at the phone app and going, hey, it's supposed to be like 80 degrees outside, this shouldn't be that bad, stepping out the door and going, blah. <laughs> it is way warmer than 80 degrees and humid. <laughs> then I would definitely recommend picking up a wind speed weather station of some type. Now for me, the wind speed's pretty cool. A standard weather station's probably more than fine because it'd be really cool to know outside air temp and the humidity because inevitably sometimes it's not the heat it's the humidity <laughs> and then the wind speed can make a really big difference too because if it's a perfectly calm day and it's hot and muggy it's going to be miserable but if it's a hot and muggy day you got a decent breeze maybe it's tolerable still no fun <laughs> But at least this will kind of tell you where you're at. So I bought this one again. It was at Lowe's on clearance. So, you know, it's kind of one of those things. Whether you go with this one or you go with a different one, it's up to you. This one wasn't too bad setting up. Plus, I've got the spare batteries that I should be able to, you know, top it off later. So it'll be interesting to see how long it lasts. And then again, the wind speed stuff's right there. The temperatures attached to the back side of that pole there, not in the sunlight in the shade where it's cool <laughs> so probably wouldn't recommend this particular model about every day that i've had it so far it's done this and worse <laughs> so it's almost like it's dropping like characters and stuff like that or i would call it pixels but it's you know not really pixels per se so 
really kind of weird. So sometimes it was just a couple letters up here, nothing else lit up. This, is, we still have some of it, but we've lost like, you know, whatever the indoor humidity is. The outdoor humidity, I can't believe it's zero. <laughs> and what is that, like an over bar if it's not an under bar? <laughs> and then same thing with down here. So that's kind of weird. Like they're starting to lose the one hour part. And the thing is, is that you shut it off and turn it back on, and it kind of comes back. So real quick, yank the power. And we'll slide it back in. Comes back, you can see all the pixels and stuff for all like the things really do work. Finds the locations for everything. It goes back to reading the sensors and stuff. So that outdoor sensor still kind of reading low power, even though it's got good batteries in it. And then the batteries in the unit itself the backup batteries you can see when i disconnected power if that circuit was working properly then this probably wouldn't have shut off when i disconnected the ac power because it definitely still has those batteries in it so kind of a bummer probably have to wind up calling lacrosse technologies See if I can figure out what's going on. Uh oh, it's third A. <laughs> uh, another day, another weird message from this thing. All right, so in order to try and fix this, I was reading, and then basically, it seems like you're able to do a factory reset. So I tried the factory reset, and also it recommended like the batteries be checked and stuff like that. So instead of checking the batteries, they also mentioned using alkaline batteries. So I don't know if the Energizer Max batteries are alkalines or not, but I figure I've got a cheap set of Amazon batteries that are alkalines. So I threw those in. So you can see for the weather station stuff, that low battery indicator is now off. So I don't know, hopefully this makes it 24 hours. <laughs> Fingers crossed. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Feel free to like and subscribe and I'll check you next time.